Sitting at home in your lounge right now, you could be in the company of something surprisingly valuable. And that's because stuff that we take for granted can be a real treasure for a museum. Even down to the stuff on our walls. This is a home decorator's dream. There are more than 100 samples in the museum's collection, and some of them have quite a story. This particular collection came to Te Papa from uh, father and son, their interior decorating business. Gordon Weaver started the business in 1919, um, and his son Ray continued it through right up until the 70s. And all these rolls and offcuts from their business sat in a stable in Newtown for decades. And when they sold the property, they decided, well, let's see if Te Papa wants them instead of chucking them away. But what was the condition of the wallpaper? Because, I mean, a stable, let's face it, is not the best place for wallpaper. No, it's it? not. It's not ideal. They had all sorts of insects, so when you would unroll a roll, you'd get dried spiders and all sorts falling out. No. And so they presented a really interesting challenge for myself and the Te Papa conservator, Philippa Durkin. We basically surface cleaned them there, got rid of most of the dirt so that we could transport them into this environment. And then we surface cleaned them further with grated eraser. What does that actually do to the, the wallpaper? It basically just lifts the surface dirt off the media and off the back of the work. It actually allows us to see the colours and the pattern better. The earliest papers in the collection come from the 1920s. These two examples here were both hung by Gordon Weaver in 1920 in the Empire Hotel on Willis Street. So you can very much tell that they've kind of got an Art Nouveau feel to them. This particular example is from the 1930s, and as you can see, it's quite busy. It is. And this is kind of harking back to when wallpaper was originally invented as an alternative to tapestries and wall hangings. This particular example is very interesting because it's got what's called a salvage on the edge. It's a very valuable record of where the wallpaper was made, who made it. You've got your trademark and also your registration mark. Moving along to the 1950s, We've got quite a few innovative trends. This particular example is shiny, and that's so the paper could be washed. They were very aware of sanitation in the 1950s, so they made them washable so they could wipe them down easily and keep their house cleaner. There was also the trend to depict the function of the room on the wallpaper. So in children's rooms, you'd get alphabet blocks, and in the kitchen, uh -huh. you'd have kitchen utensils. Obviously. <laughs> This particular piece was made by quite a well-known designer in England, Shand Kidd. Um, so it's a, probably a high-quality wallpaper, and somebody would have paid quite a lot of money to have this hung in their kitchen. Some of these designs were hung in Kiwi homes nearly 100 years ago. And like other fashions, they're about due for a revival. So next time you're doing a spot of DIY home decorating, why not use these as inspiration?